This is Holka Glossom Kimberlianum. She has never bloomed for me, but oh my goodness, she is going nuts. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. It's good to have you here. So <laughs> what does it take for a blooming size orchid to be in your collection year after year without blooming? My Holka Glossom Kimberlianum from here on in, I will refer to her as Kimmy, came into my collection in December of 2018. She was just a smidge longer than the Choya log that she is attached to, and that log is wired to the base of the medium-sized orchid top that she is in, which is only halfway filled with lava rock. The length of her tallest growths right now, if I were able to stretch them out without all the kinks of the direction of the light, etc., they are at a full meter and they were pinned to the base of the Choya log in the orchid top. So, <laughs> yeah, the sky is the limit. Now, it took her a while to get her grow on and she was amongst the first orchids. That made me scratch my head about the fact that orchids can take temperatures much lower than my personal comfort zone, and some, in actual fact, need lower temperatures in order to bloom. Keeping in mind that I started growing orchids in Kenya, <laughs> and I've never had cold growing orchids, so at the start of this collection, I have other orchids, and yeah, she was one of those that I was like, really? You need it that cold? You like it that cold? <laughs> Because judging by her slender Tourette growth habit, I would not have expected this orchid to be able to tolerate temperatures below 15 degrees Celsius, but Kimmy lives outside all year round here in southern Spain and has tolerated temperatures down to 5 degrees Celsius on occasions. That is too cold for me, so <laughs> I would definitely not be a Holcoglossum Kimberlianum in my next life. Well, I take that back. We shall have to wait and see. <laughs> now, based on the fact that this orchid does need a temperature drop in order for her to bloom, to this day, I have not seen anything of the sort, and her reputation of being a prolific bloomer, I debunk right here and right now, based on my personal experience. The name Holcoglossum, deriving from the Greek holkos, meaning strap, and glossa, meaning tongue, is directed at the strap-shaped lip from the species Holcoglossum quasipinifolium. I've got the Kimbilianum. I wouldn't be able to tell you apart from pictures whether this orchid has a strap lip. I would like to see them in person <laughs> to be able to make that judgment call. <laughs> now, the coloration of her leaves is standard and not because she's getting too much light. Meanwhile, I do have her in full sun during the winter months for a couple of hours. But during the summer months, she gets super bright shade and not a lick of direct sun. The Tourette leaves of this species resemble pine needles. And as a result, this genus is commonly known as the pine needle orchid in some parts of the world. However, the leaves are very easy to snap. Do not be fooled by their tough-looking needle-like structures, especially when you just accidentally brush up against the leaves because they have a succulent feel to them. I have been very fortunate that where she lives, I don't have to move her much, so leaf damage has been minimal. I rarely feature this orchid in videos because she is hard to film. <laughs> I'm trying here with my B-roll footage. <laughs> and of course, there are no blooms to show. But here I am geeking out over her growth spurt. And that is why she's in the viewfinder, because she has put on a tremendous amount of growth in the past two years. And this is the best time of year to show this orchid, as she is going nuts everywhere. What I thought were five spikes back in August of 2022 turned out to be new growths. All of them. I was thrilled to see something out of the ordinary coming from the apex of the leaves and was certain they were spikes because it is from the apex of the leaves where spikes would grow and then the wait is on for blooms because it can take up to six months from spikes showing to the orchid actually blooming. Anyway, fast forward, here we are in January of 2023 and we have five new growths which are all growing their own roots and talk about how fast they are growing. There is hardly any Teflon effect on the new roots of this orchid. It is a spray and absorb straight out of the gate. Thirsty much is all I can say. <laughs> 
I have as yet to mist her down, something that I have to do at least two times per day this time of year, three to four times a day during the warmer months of the year. But if I had misted her before filming, the beauty of the velamen contrasting the root tips would have been lost. And seeing as that is all I have to show for at the moment, I wanted to show the velamen and the root tips. The heavy misting that I have had to do during the warmer months of the year has resulted in one of the earliest leads to rot out. And yet, that lead was just a dried up stem and it still tried to grow several new growths, which all failed because I had to take the larger growth's needs into consideration. And still, it has produced two more growths, one of which is looking as if it is about to fail and the other one is now growing its own root and that is great news. Talk about incredible resilience, or should I say stubborn intent of going against the grain, aka I refuse to rot. <laughs> I love this orchid. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> the fun part this time of year with this orchid is that I can fertilize and supplement without any inhibitions. Right now I'm alternating my fertilizer and supplement regime with one day of CalMag at 100 parts per million and fertilizer at 300 parts per million the next day. I do on occasions just mist with plain water, but at the rate she's growing, I am throwing everything at her because my low temperatures ensure that there is no danger of any excessive fertilizer or supplement concentration accumulating on the roots, which could, in other conditions, result in possible burning and destruction of the velamen. I cannot be this generous during the warmer months of the year because of my low humidity and warm winds, but I do have plenty of roots in the dish of the orchid top where the fertilizer or supplement solution is always topped up during those conditions where I cannot fertilize as much as I would like. Now, active root growth does happen in winter. This is not unusual, and it continues on through spring. But I strongly believe that the torrential rain we had in December of 2022 was the trigger to get this kind of root activity going to this extent. She is a happy root grower during the best of times, but this is unprecedented. And who doesn't like to see new roots? And I am only too happy to share. You're welcome. So while I'm talking, I had a thought. Would you keep an orchid that is clearly blooming size, but not blooming no matter what? Let me know in the comments. I'm interested to see what you do in a similar situation, bearing in mind that I have had this orchid now for four years, we're heading into the fifth, and not a single spike in sight. Maybe we can hope for 2023. <laughs> she should bloom end of summer into fall, which means spikes should be showing around this time of year, but with this much active growth, I have a feeling that the focus is not on producing spikes. I might be wrong. There's always room for hope. But again, would you keep an orchid that is clearly growing well, but just not blooming in your conditions? And what would your criteria be in order to keep a non-blooming orchid, bearing in mind it is blooming size? Anyway, let me tell you my opinion on whether to keep an orchid like this is, it depends. I love this orchid because of its funky look. That ticks that box. It's clearly not unhappy and has the five new growths progress, it will certainly start to look more and more impressive. A network of growths and roots, it'll just look even more wild. I like wild. That ticks a box as well, so she is so far a keeper. She is unusual, she can live outside in my climate, so that helps a lot with the winter. And if this were my property, I would have her pinned against the fencing along which she currently lives and let her do her thing. That ticks a variety of boxes, so yeah, she's a keeper. And you can tell that I am keeping this orchid for its unusual look, blooms or not. <laughs> and that wonderful moss growing at the base, oh my goodness, I just love it. Regarding that moss, a fun little anecdote. I have blackbirds coming around during the spring that pick at the moss, thinking that the roots they see in the dish are worms. <laughs> And I have seen roots suffer some damage back in the spring of 2022, but the birds leave quickly realizing that they have been duped and there is nothing to get out of this moss. Unfortunately, it destroys the look of the moss for a short while, but look at it now, it's all grown back. I just, oh, I think it's amazing. 
Oh, and one last thing before I let you go and say thank you so much for letting me geek out over my Kimmy for a little bit with you. If you grow Holcoglossum Kimberlianum and you have her blooming on a consistent basis, would you let me know in the comments what your conditions are? You know, the usual light, temperature, any kind of information that could be of use. Maybe I can pick up on something that I do not have dialed in and can adapt and apply accordingly. Alternatively, if you know someone that may have some valuable insight, please be so kind as to share the video and see what other information I can glean. Oh, and while you are up there with the share button, consider giving this video a like. It would help with my self-esteem. <laughs> And if you have not subscribed, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. I desperately need the YouTube algorithm to find me, seeing as my location, southern Spain, appears to be a black hole for channels that are trying to get noticed by a larger audience. Thank you so much for doing all that. I greatly appreciate it. And thank you for watching, even though all I could show you was sticks that looked like pine needles, but impressive root growth, I hope that made up for no blooms. Have yourselves a wonderful day. On that one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.